What's up guys? It's your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba, and your girl's got boho locks again. Clearly this is just becoming my go-to, I don't wanna deal with my hair for at least four weeks type of protective style. But as you can see from looking at me, as well as from the title of this video, I opted for the bob length. Now, Lulu launched the bob length version of the Boho Locks probably six months ago or so. It's a relatively newer addition to her product lineup. And I was interested in that length immediately. It just looks so cute and short and sassy because you guys have seen me wear the original Boho Locks before they are quite Quite long they come down to my butt on my 5-4 frame so the bob length is great for people who just don't want to deal with all that hair or just prefer the aesthetic of a shorter set of locks the issue with the shorter locks is if you're doing individuals in the front or even in just your whole head how you going to get your hair in there if your hair is longer than the locks? That was something that I knew I was going to have to figure out. And I went ahead and I actually purchased a set of the Boho Bob Locks in the bronze color, which is the original color that I ever tried and really loved. And I hadn't even gotten around to using that set of Bob Locks when she launched this color, which is called Bay Blonde. This is one of her newer colors, which she just launched in July. At the time I'm filming this video, it's about mid-August. So I don't even think this color has been out for a month yet but I really wanted to try it and I'll talk more about my feelings on that after I get through the part that you probably clicked on this video for which is to learn how the hell I fit my hair which is as long or longer than these locks inside of these locks essentially what I did is a trick that I've been doing with my kind of bangs area up until about two years ago the right side of my head was shaved so because I've only got about two years of growth there that hair probably comes down to like my collarbone whereas this side comes down past my armpit so when I've got my little bangs out, it looks a bit ridiculous. The trick that I've been doing to make that look a bit more even and symmetrical is the same trick that I've employed to get my hair inside of these locks that are actually shorter than my hair. And that is essentially to use the same method you do when you do a hanging bantu knot, but you just take it way farther up than you would with a hanging bantu knot. Here's the technique that I did. All I did was I basically would take one of my twists that I knew would be far too long to be able to get wrapped completely in one of these locks. And then I would take my finger and decide about where I wanted my hair to end. As if I were going to cut my hair. If I were to cut my hair, this is where I would cut it. And that's where I placed my finger. And then I would start doing the hanging bantu knot right from there. So I would use my finger to sort of anchor it and I would start doing the hanging bantu knot right around that point. And you'll notice if the loop is too big because it will basically be the size of your finger and the bigger it is, the more noticeable it will probably be once you actually wrap the lock around, it will stick out and be very noticeable. All I did to remedy that was basically slide down after I had wrapped the tail of the twist around a few times, I'd slide down a few of those coils to close that loop a little bit and make that little loop a lot smaller. And that made it a lot easier to conceal once it came time to actually wrap the faux lock around. It seemed like such an obvious solution to me because this is what I've been doing with my little twisted bangs. Here you can see the braid pattern that I went with. I went with two rows of cornrows. Well, not cornrows, because I can't cornrow worth a damn. This time around, I left out only the front for individuals rather than the entire perimeter of my head because due to the length of these locks, I don't really see myself pulling them up and wanting to do too many styles I'm probably just going to wear them down unless I'm at the gym and then I'll just pull them back into a low ponytail so the only leave out I have for individuals is in the front however if you watched my previous video that I did on my last set of boho locks you also know that I kind of have my own technique for dealing with the tails of my flat twists which are technically braided in any event those tails get sort of a version of the individual method where I'm wrapping the lock around the exposed hair rather than trying to sew down the ends of my braids because I don't know how to do all that. I'm not gonna get into that because I've done an entire video on that technique and I'll link it here. The point is, pretty much all of my hair is too long for these locks, especially because there are two lengths when you get the bob set. There is a longer length, which I believe you're meant to install more toward the middle and top of your head, and then the shorter length, which I installed in the back. I suppose you could do it whichever way you want if you wanted to put the shorter ones on top, but I put the shorter ones basically from about here down with that second row of flat twisty braid situations that I put in. And then I use the longer locks from here up all the way to the front of my head. That ends up creating 
is this an angled bob? Is that what it's called? I don't know too much about white people haircuts, but I think that's an angled bob is what they call it. I absolutely love it, by the way, because it's nice. It's still very hot where I live, so it's nice to not really feel like I have much hair on my neck at all, even when I'm wearing this down. And this hanging bantu knot to the max is basically how I was able to get all of my hair inside of these twists wherever I was doing the individual wrapping method uh, for any of my hair, whether it was the in the back or here in the front where I have the full-on individuals that I wrapped one by one. And I think it turned out pretty well. The only lesson I have here is even though it worked decently well for me uh, splitting my hair into two rows to make sure the ends of my braids weren't too, too, too thick, some of them were still kind of thick. And with those, once I was wrapping the hair, um, it basically wound up looking like a straight lock rather than having the sort of wavy curl look that the boho locks normally have because I was wrapping such thick hair, it was taking away from the normal texture of the lock and it really is just making my braids blend in color-wise but not texturally. So here's one you can see it looks quite straight and this would probably blend better if you had a different brand of locks where they don't have this wave and curl to all of them. It would probably look just fine because most of the faux locks that you see are just straight. But for me I feel like it still blends well enough and the nice thing about boho locks is there's such a sort of bohemian free-spirited type of aesthetic I think it kind of works anyway if you have a few locks that might look a little bit different kind of floating through and peeking through I, it doesn't bother me the main thing that bothers me honestly is just the thickness so I think next time I did nine flat twists in the front and then four in the back I think next time I would do even more just so that those tails can be even thinner and easier to wrap Nonetheless, this is the technique that I will be using next time because I absolutely love this length. Even though I just installed these locks yesterday, I definitely prefer this to the longer ones. It's just a lot easier. I haven't worked out with them yet, but I already know it's going to be so nice. Boho locks do come with a little kit of accessories, which I normally stay away from because I feel like they're just so Instagram. They're not really for me most of the time, but I did decide to use some this time because I was being strategic. It's pretty typical that when you do individuals, you will see, see some of your hair peeking through. Like you don't really get a perfect wrap unless you're going to double wrap your, your real hair. I can't be bothered with all that. So for any ones where I felt like the little loop at the bottom of my shortened twist was a little bit too noticeable, a little bit too pronounced, that's where I would add a little piece of one of the hair jewels to kind of pinch it in and conceal it. And now that the little pieces of jewelry are in there, I actually quite like it. I feel like it looks super cute. So I guess I take back what I said about not wanting to be on trend because it's super trendy and I'm actually really feeling it. As far as the color goes, I will admit this is the blondest I have ever been. If you're an o o o o o g part of my family here on YouTube, you will remember I reviewed a certain wig a few years ago where the description on the website was quite confusing and it ended up arriving way blonder than I thought it would be. And in that video where I was unboxing it and trying it on, it was just like instant panic and regret. I ain't no blonde. I'm not a blonde, I'm not a blonde. And when this initially arrived, it didn't look that blonde to me in the pack. So I was just like, oh yeah, totally. It's a little bit ashier compared to the blonde color. Like the blonde to me is more of a warm kind of Beyonce blonde on the tips. It ombres from, you know, your typical dark brown and it's that, that sort of honey blonde on the ends. This didn't look that different to me, but once I finished installing it, I looked at myself in the mirror. I was just like, uh, uh, uh. I just thought it might be too blonde for my comfort level, but I feel like I'm getting used to it. It's only, I've had them in less than 24 hours, so I think I just have to get a little bit accustomed to it and I think it will grow on me. So this is the Bay Blonde color. They actually fucked up my order. I was supposed to have the Bay Blonde Mermaid Locks, which if you're unfamiliar with boho locks, the mermaid locks come with loose pieces of wavy hair that you incorporate throughout the style to give it an even more free spirit bohemian vibe. And that's what I really wanted, but they fucked up. They sent me the wrong thing and I honestly didn't notice until yesterday when I went to and saw it. I was just like, wait, where's the loose hair in this pack? And I even pulled up my order and my Gmail and I was just like, no, I definitely ordered the mermaid locks and they sent me the goddess, but I don't mind too much because I feel like I, I'm just so happy with the way the length is and the way they're falling with how I installed the lengths 
very, very pleased. Still gotta get used to being this blonde. I don't know, man. Do blondes have more fun? I feel like if I had any more fun than I already do, I, I might pass away. This is the new Bay Blonde color, and this is also the newish bob length. I hope that this is helpful to you guys who might have longer hair but weren't sure how to do the individuals and still fit your longer hair inside of the faux locks. You will need to be careful when you're wrapping your hair that's got that aggressive hanging bantu knot because the way you remove a hanging bantu knot is simply by pinching it and then sliding down. And that's kind of the same thing you're doing as you're wrapping the faux lock around your hair. It's like you're pinching your hair and sliding your finger down as you wrap. So that will take a bit of care and practice, but I feel like this is a useful technique, at least for me, so that I can continue to enjoy this style the next time I wanna use it and the time after that and not have to worry about my hair being too long. A simple fix, but I think an effective one. And as many of you guys know, I always say I don't want to bring you guys information that's already out there. That's why I never do videos. I'm like, this is how to do a twist out. I try to bring at least somewhat new and fresh tips, tricks, and innovations to you guys as best I can, which is probably why I don't make that many hair videos because I don't want to make a hair video just for the sake of making one when I'm just repeating shit that's already out there. I don't know if I've invented this technique, but I certainly had not seen this done on YouTube. I just sort of came up with it and thought I'd give it a go and it worked for me. So I'm not trying to steal anyone else's idea. I know people get all up in their feelings on YouTube about shit like that. It's not that serious. It just seemed like a practical solution and I wanted to share it with you all. That being said, my Instagram family already knows that I've had this style in for quite a while, but by the time this video goes up, uh, I'll probably have had them in for a good week or two. In any event, I hope it was helpful and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>